place where you'll grow in your faith as Springfield. Join us in worship. Welcome home. Good morning. Good morning. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to God in the highest. Today is Palm Sunday, the Sunday before Easter, the week of Passion Week. So we honor and we bless God for Jesus Christ, who made that triumphant, triumphant entry into Jerusalem as our Lord and Savior and King. Jesus rode into Jerusalem lowly and humble on the back of a donkey. And the Bible says that a great crowd gathered and laid palm branches at their and their cloaks across the road, giving Jesus royal respect and honor. Yeah. So we join that crowd this morning. Amen. We join that crowd this morning. And we shout, Hosanna! 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 Glory to God in the highest. Hosanna means save us. Deliver us. See, I don't know about you, but I'm glad God saved me. He delivered me. What a mighty God we serve. If you're not standing, we ask you to stand at this moment if you're able to. As we join our praise team this morning. Um, I'm sorry, as we do our call to worship. Let us do our call to worship. And it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. If you will please remain standing as we join our praise team and our morning selection. Hallelujah. We come to praise the Lord this morning as we just look forward to the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands with us this morning. Oh, arise.
pray. Father God, we say arise this morning with the voice of our praise team this morning that came to lift up your holy name, God. Arise, O oh God, and take your place. For you are good and your mercy endure forever, God. Lord, we just thank you this morning because you let us see another day, God. A, God, a day that was not even promised to us, but God, you're, you're, you're still so good to us, Lord. You keep on making a way out of no way, God. Oh, God, you lifted us up out of our sick bed, Lord God. Oh, God, when we were weak, God, you made us strong, Lord. God, we just thank you, God, for being a, 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 being a, a, a mover on all things, God. God, you move in our lives, Lord God. Things that are seen and not seen, God. God, you are there, God. God, you've been there from the beginning. And God, you are the Alpha and the Omega. Father, we just thank you for all that you do, God. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy, God. That endures for all generations, God. Oh, God, you are my mother's God, and you are my father's God. And Father God, I thank you for being my God. Lord, I thank you this morning, God. Oh, Father God, when I was sick, God, you raised me up, God. Oh, God, when I was poor in spirit, God, you, you healed me, God. Lord, I just thank you this morning, God. God, we ask you to come in this place this morning, God. Have your mighty way, Lord God. This is Palm Sunday, God. God, a day that we recognize and we remember what your son Jesus did. Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus. Thank you. God, where would we be without your son Jesus, God? Father, we just thank you, God, for your son, Jesus. The one that bled, died on, on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins, God. For that, God, we say thank you, God. Now, God, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, the ones that we are aware of, the ones that we don't know of, God. Oh, God, cleanse us, Father God, from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, God. God, if there's anything in us that's not like you, God, we ask that you move it right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, we ask you to have your way in this place, Lord God. God, move, God, from the front door to the back. Oh, Father God, have your way, God, in this manservant this morning that's going to break the bread of life this morning, God. God, let him preach, Father God, to the point that somebody may say, what must I do to be saved? Oh, God, we glorify and we magnify your holy name. Bless now, God. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning is number 569. 569 in the back of our hymn books. And it's on the screen, and it's entitled Palm Sunday, taken from John, the 12th chapter, Mark, the 11th chapter. And it reads... On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, and said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye entered, it, entered into it, ye shall find a coat tied, whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And they went their way and found the coat tied by the door without in a place where two ways met, and they loosed him. And they said unto them, even as Jesus had commanded, and they let, him, let them go. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and strawed them in the way. All together. Blessed be the kingdom of our Lord that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll have another selection by our praise team.
those hands together as we continue to give him praise this morning. We give him the highest praise, which is hallelujah. in this place oh come on that's real good to me but if he's really been good to you you ought to give him praise and celebrate your soon coming king hallelujah he's worthy of all the praise 
We want to take this time this morning to welcome each and every one of you into our worship space. And for those who are worshiping with us virtually, we thank God for your presence because we know that there are so many other places that you could have logged into this morning. But we know that it is not by happenstance that you are here with us. And so we want to welcome you into the virtual sanctuary. Springfield, if this is somebody's first time here who is worshiping with us, we ask that you please stand and remain standing at this time. If this is your first time worshiping with us, won't you stand? Amen. Amen. So usually we would have come and uh, shook your hand, but since we are in this age of post-pandemic, we're going to wave and welcome you in the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. And at this time, Springfield, won't you turn your attention to the worship screens as we receive our spotlight? Today on the Springfield Spotlight. It's time for the Springfield Chronicles 2024 Spring Edition, and we encourage your submission. Share a personal testimony. Do you have an encouraging poetic word for God's glory? Share a recent promotion or recognition at work. Have you been blessed to retire? If so, tell us about it. Springfield Baptist Church College students, share what's going on and how God's blessings are providing for your college success. Ministries, share highlights of your events and programs. Submission deadline is Sunday, March 24th. Hey, men of Springfield, it's time to play some ball. With the 2024 softball season beginning April 4th, we need all men ages 16 and over interested in joining Springfield softball team to sign up on our website today. Please mark your calendars for the following cancellations in our weekly activities this week. Tuesday, Youth and Children's Open Gym, Wednesday, Men's Open Gym, and Thursday's Pickleball. Also, Bible study is canceled for Tuesday and Wednesday. On Good Friday at 12 p.m., Dr. Sturdivant will be a guest speaker at the Baptist Grove Church, 7109 Leesville Road, Raleigh, North Carolina, for their seven last sayings at the cross. All are welcome to come and support, and if you can't make it, please send your prayers. Join us virtually on Good Friday, March 29th at 7 p.m. as we observe the seven last sayings from the cross. This year, we're highlighting messages from the past. So if you thought the previous years were amazing, don't miss the seven last sayings remix. Be sure to tune in on our website, YouTube channel, and Facebook page. Our children's ministry is hosting a resurrection celebration for our children ages 2 through 12 in the community center on Saturday, March 30th. There will be crafts, games, prizes, and food. Parents, be sure to have your children in the place to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. This event begins at 10 a.m. and ends at 1.30 p.m. On Saturday, March 30th at 4 p.m., our drama ministry will present Good Friday, Before, During, and After. This will be a dramatic presentation with musical selections and praise dancing. Join us in the multi-purpose gymnasium. Doors open at 3.30 p.m. and the show starts at 4 p.m. Join us for Resurrection Sunday worship at 10 a.m. and a special Sunday school breakfast beginning at 7 a.m. in our multi-purpose center gymnasium. This will be an exciting time where all Sunday school classes will join together for a great lesson, food, and fellowship. All are welcome to come. See you there. All 6th through 12th graders, listen up. We're in search for the next Springfield participants in the 2024 James F. Wirtz Oratorical Contest. This contest is right around the corner on May 4th. But no need to worry. We will help you prepare. All those interested in this great opportunity, click the graphic on our website for more information and to register. Registration deadline is April 1st. Ladies and gentlemen of Springfield and the community, it's time for us to honor the one and only Reverend Dr. Kevin D. Sturdivant for being the dopest pastor for the last five years to us here at Springfield. Be sure to save the date for a black tie affair on Friday, May 17th at 7 p.m. Registration begins on Sunday, March 31st on our website. 
Be on the lookout for more information about this celebration. Springfield, today is our pastor's birthday. Dr. Sturdivant, we celebrate you today and are grateful for you. Springfield, if you can, stand to your feet as we sing happy birthday to our pastor. Birthday May the peace of the Lord go with you throughout the week until we meet again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Y'all sit down. Why y'all? I'll tell you the truth. Wait a minute. Okay, what am I doing? Don't go too far. <laughs> uh, first of all, I just want to thank the uh, F and J Ministry. They uh, actually do a whole lot of stuff for our pastor behind the scenes. You don't get an opportunity to see it, so we want to thank them for that. But since we already know this is a special day for our pastor, uh, I do want to acknowledge my deacons, um, whom, if you look at them. They are wearing a very special color. <laughs> or colors. <laughs> in honor of our pastor and his alma mater. Now, I will say this much. And we know our pastor's alma mater is at North Carolina A&T State University. Right? Now, I will say this. Some of our deacons went to Central. So you can imagine how difficult it was for them. <laughs> but what that goes to show you is that we're one. We're, we're one unit. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So we would like to present you with this, if you don't mind, sir. <clears throat> Greatest pastor in the world. in the back <laughs> I was in the back and I, when I came out like there were five or six of, of my deacons standing right there and I looked at them and said I must didn't get the blue and gold memo <laughs> like all oh, y'all got on blue and gold except for me if I had known I would have put on blue and gold amen amen um, all right I don't want to spend too much time here because y'all know I'm a crybaby Y'all know I'm a crybaby, so I don't want to spend too much time here. But I will say, uh, I'm thankful for 48 years. here and uh, she can testify to the fact that there were times
and it didn't look like I would make it this far. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful for 48 years. I give God all the praise for it. Realize that it has nothing to do with my goodness. But it's all about his goodness. I can't. I can't testify for you, but I can testify for me. He's been good to me. He's been better than I deserve. And so I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful for 48 years. Now see what y'all did. Man, all right, y'all got me. Okay, you got me. All right. Okay, amen. All right. All right, now I got to be pastoral real quick. Okay, so um, really quickly again, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm so honored and, and grateful um, to be a part of the legacy of the Springfield Baptist Church. I do not take it for granted that God has blessed us to be able to share this leg of the journey together. And so I'm so grateful for all of your kindness and all of your well wishes. Um, there are churches across the span of this globe that do not recognize their pastor's birthday. And so I'm honored and humbled that you would think it not robbery to do so today. So thank you, Springfield. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. All right. There are a few things that we have to do really quickly, a few things that we need to do. Um, one of them is... Uh, I want to um, draw your attention. I'm going to embarrass two people really quickly. I want you to draw your attention to the pulpit. As you see, we have someone new uh, sitting in the pulpit today. <laughs> Minister Cassandra Gibson. <laughs> Amen. On last week, she did a wonderful job. Last Sunday evening at 3 p.m., she did a wonderful job uh, preaching her initial sermon, and uh, we thought it not robbery to bring her to the pulpit today, amen, to, to, to baptize her, amen, and what it feels like to sit up here with all these eyes looking at you. <laughs> amen, but she uh, did a wonderful job, and we're so grateful to God for her, amen, and for what the Lord has done. Obviously, uh, she is one of our newest associates, but we also thank God for the addition of the Reverend Dr. Rhonda Wright to our associate ministers. <laughs> Dr. Wright, will you stand? We thank God for her as well. We are grateful to God for her addition and believe by faith that God will uh, use her mightily. She is someone who is accomplished and has so many gifts and skills. And we're grateful to God uh, for her joining and being a part of the team. Amen. Amen and amen. I would ask you to pray for the both of them. Amen. I would ask you to pray for the both of them. Amen. <clears throat> as they um, work in this area of the vineyard and come to serve the Lord. We're grateful also today to be able to recognize the right hand of fellowship. And I'm so grateful for what the Lord is doing here at the Springfield Baptist Church. Amen. I do not take it for granted that uh, the Lord continues to add to the number. And so we're grateful to God for that. So as we prepare for the right hand of fellowship, you are aware of what scripture says in Acts chapter 2. The Bible there says in Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse number 44, the Bible says all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. 
They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This morning, we have the blessed privilege and honor to recognize a tradition as old as the church herself in adding new members to the fellowship. Amen. <clears throat> Every opportunity that I have to do this, I remind us of what scripture says in verse number 47 of Acts chapter two, it says, the Lord added to the number. It's important that we hear that. It's important that that is reiterated. It is important so that we understand whose church this really is. Amen. This is the Lord's church, and it is he who adds to the number. So we come today to publicly acknowledge what the Lord has already done spiritually. And we can praise God that the Lord has seen fit to add the following people who come as candidates for membership. When I call your name, if you would please come forward and face the congregation. Ebony Allen. Mark Allen. Latanya Badger. Casey Brown. Kinesia Divine. And Arnetta Greer. Let's give God praise for these. They have completed the necessary requirements to become members of the Springfield Baptist Church. And on this joyous occasion this morning, we will now entertain a motion that these be accepted uh, as members of the Springfield Baptist Church with full rights and privileges. Our Deacon Chairman, uh, Deacon Fred Clark, uh, is coming along with our Deacon Ministry Secretary, Deacon Tim Whitaker, as they will come at this time. I move that those that stand before us be received with full membership, with all rights and privileges. Second. Been properly moved and seconded that we accept these as they stand before us as members of the Springfield Baptist Church, all in favor signify by standing and the clapping of your hands. Amen. Amen. And amen. Please remain standing. Please remain standing. Please remain standing as Deacon Whitaker will now come and lead us all in the responsive reading of our church covenant. Our church covenant, it's on your screens. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. We do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. To promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines. Ministry of the church and the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. Lord, 
To avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love. To be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay altogether. Engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. Let us pray. Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come today thanking you for the blessed privilege of partnership that connects us to you in Christian ministry and in Christian love. We thank you, Lord, for these that you have sent and believe by faith that you have sent them here to the Springfield Baptist Church to be a part of this faith, fellowship, and family. Some as new converts, some as those who have recommitted their lives to you, and others who join through Christian experience. We ask your blessings upon them now. Bless them, Lord, that this may be the place where they feel you, serve you, learn you, and love you. And help us as a growing congregation to welcome these that you have sent with open arms and with helpful hands that we may all be more productive and useful in our knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. It is in excitement in anticipation of what the Lord has done and will do, that the pastor, ministers, deacons, and spouses will now come and extend to these the right hand of fellowship.
sing is Springfield. You are welcome here in the house of the Lord. Come on. Come and receive what God has in store. Welcome to the place where you grow in your faith at Springfield. Here you're welcome. Here you are welcome. We invite you to join us. We invite you to join us in worship. Welcome home. Come on, one more time. You're welcome here. You are welcome here in the house of the Lord. Come and receive. Come and receive what God has in store. Welcome to the place. Welcome to the place where, where you, you grow. grow in the place. All right. That's Welcome to the place. Here you're welcome. Sounds so nice. Let's do it twice. All right. Everybody in the sanctuary, let's see. You are welcome here in the house of the Lord. Come and receive what God has in store. Welcome to the place. Welcome to Give God the praise for these four. We welcome you and thank God for you. Amen. You guys may return to your seats. Springfield at large, if you would like to welcome our new members and meet them and shake their hands and give them a hug of love, you'll be able to do that immediately after the service in the multi-purpose building. But we thank and praise God. Amen. Anytime the Lord adds to the number. Amen. Amen and amen. Minister Isom is coming now to take us further in worship. Let's receive him by saying amen. 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 Let the church say amen again. Amen. amen. Springfield, it's time to give. Amen. amen. And now you know that there are four ways that you can give. You can give online by uh, going to springfieldbaptistchurch.com. You can text to give, text give to 919-584-9070. You can also mail your gift to 4309 Auburn Nightdale Road here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And you can also give your gift by um, dropping in one of the slots in the vestibules here, here, and here. And there's also one in the MPC lobby. Amen? Amen. Why don't you join me in prayer? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. God, we thank you for these gifts as well as the giver. God, we pray that you would bless it, that you would um, use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on the earth, and that you might get the glory out of these gifts. God, we pray this in the name of Jesus and everybody who agreed said amen, amen. and amen. Amen. At this time, Springfield will be led further in worship by our praise team. Won't you receive them by saying amen? amen. Bye. 
find your mercy toward us for your goodness and your mercy toward us we
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can anybody admit he's been kind, he's been good, he's been faithful, he's been trustworthy, he's been better to you than you've even been to yourself. When you look back over your life and begin to think about the goodness of the Lord, some kind of way your hands go up and your feet feel light and your mouth flies open and you just want to say, Lord, I just want to thank you for all that you have done for me. Is there anybody in the building today that doesn't mind giving God a shout of hallelujah? that doesn't mind giving God a shout of thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough, but with the one tongue that I do have, I want to say thank you. I want to say glory. I want to say hallelujah. Is there anybody here that don't mind helping me praise a good God? Come on, somebody open your mouth. Somebody rail your head back and say, Lord, I just want to thank you for your goodness and your mercy, for your goodness. Come on, help me. Goodness and your mercy for us. For us. For your goodness. Come on. For your goodness. And your mercy. For your goodness, for your goodness, for your goodness. For your goodness mercy. and your mercy toward us. Toward us. We are Springfield, our, our minister of music and his family are on a, a much deserved vacation. Amen. <laughs> Today we are certainly grateful to have filling in uh, my brother from another mother. Rodney Milton is with us today on keys and organ. <laughs> That's my dude right there. That's my dude right there. We go way back. We go way back. He used to, he used to play for Pastor when, when Pastor didn't have no church. Amen. 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 We thank and praise God for him. We thank God for Brother Darrell Dukes. Amen. God bless you on the drums, man. I didn't know that was you. Good to see you, man. Amen. 
And we thank God, amen, for our very own Brother Joseph Williams on the base. Amen. The Lord is blessing him. We give God praise for that. Amen. Amen. Listen, I forgot. See, this is what happens when y'all mess me up. So I was supposed to do some of this stuff earlier, but y'all decided to mess me up. And so, amen. Listen, uh, we want you this week to support the uh, Rima Holy Week services. We want you to support the Rima Holy Week services. Amen. Uh, those services will take place on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And so we're going to ask that uh, in lieu of coming here for Bible study or for a prayer meeting uh, on, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to ask you to support the Rima Holy Week services on a Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, those services will take place at New Bethel, uh, where Pastor Tracy Bell is the pastor. Uh, you all know um, that pastor, your pastor is a part of the uh, REMA, uh, the Raleigh Interdenominational Ministerial Alliance. And so we ask that you would support those services. Amen, and we give God praise for that. So please do that. The services are, to, are Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 7 p.m. And so we ask that you would support them. Amen. Please do so. Please support them. Amen. Now listen, let me just go ahead and tell you. Uh, let me just go ahead and tell you. We need you to support them, uh, especially on behalf of your pastor, amen, who is not going to be in town. All right? So I, just because I ain't going to be here. Try over here, cause that side busted out laughing. All right, so 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 we need you to support. Amen. Please support uh, the services. We we give God praise for what Rima is trying to do uh, in make our community more of what God would call and assign us to be. Amen. And so please support those services Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, I'm sure you will be blessed. Amen. And so I'm grateful to God. Again, those services are uh, at New Bethel, uh, where uh, Pastor Tracy Bell is the pastor. Amen. And we give God praise. Amen for that. Now, I, uh, y'all, listen, I'm trying to make it through this service without just falling into a puddle of, of tears. Amen. But y'all keep doing stuff to me. So, so amen. I need y'all praying. Um, uh, I am honored today. I am honored today that, uh, well, I guess he's unofficial. He's unofficial and official. Uh, uh, my unofficial and official first son in ministry is here. Amen. Minister Benjamin Simpson, God bless you, man. Good to see you. Wave at us. Amen. Amen. Good to see you, man brought his wife. Amen. Sister Vernell, God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. Thank y'all so much for being here. Man, now see, I'm trying to make it through this sermon. Y'all keep surprising me. I don't know. Y'all pray. Anybody praying? I hope so. All right. Uh, meet me in Mark's gospel, chapter number 11. Mark's gospel, chapter number 11. Mark's gospel, chapter number 11. Uh, Springfield, do me a favor, will you? Will you do me a favor today, Springfield? Do me a favor, will you? Don't make me work too hard on my birthday. <laughs> All right? All right. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor, you showed up to preach, so do it. <laughs> Amen. Okay. I'm here. All right. All right. <laughs> Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. I just want to slow walk some things. I promise you I won't be before you long. Uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, and I want to begin reading at verse number 1 and read through verse number 11 of Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. Uh, we're going to slow walk this. This is from the King James Version of Scripture. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning with verse number 1. Then the Bible says, And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a coat tied, whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, 
and straightway he will be sent he will send him hither verse number four and they went their way and found the coat tied by the door without in a place where two ways meet and they loose him and certain of them that stood there said unto them what do ye loosen the coat and they said unto them even as Jesus had commanded and they let them go and they brought the coat to Jesus and cast their garments on him and he sat upon him and many spread their garments in the way and others cut down branches off the trees and strewed them in the way and they that went before and they that followed cried saying Hosanna meaning save now blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around about all things, and now eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Let's pray together. Guide me, O thy great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak and thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. With your prayers and the aid of the Holy Spirit, I want to talk to you briefly from the thought, doctrine, and donkeys. Amen. Ushers, you may be seated. Thank you for your service. Amen. Doctrine and donkeys. Brothers and sisters, make no mistake about it. God can and will use absolutely anything to draw people to him. I think I'll say that again in English. God can, will, and does use absolutely anything to bring people to him. God can use unusual circumstances. God can use providential coincidences. God can even use your pleasure and your pain to bring you to him. In fact, brothers and sisters, not only can he do it, but he often does it. And I have a sneaky suspicion this morning that there are some of us under the sound of my voice who can testify to the fact that God, even though he may have had to take you the long way, he still brought you in because God can and will and does use anything to bring people to him. Brothers and sisters, God's Repertoire. God's inventory is not short of any tool that he may need to use to bring you to him. God is so ingenious. God is, 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 is so benevolent. God, God is, is so omniscient that not only can he use people, but he can also use animals. You, you ain't got to believe me. I, I got Bible. Uh, God, God uses even animals to teach us lessons. God even uses things that we would not even give thought to, to, to try and paint a picture that will bring us in closer relationship with God. The Bible tells us in Genesis, after the flood, God decides to use both doves 
and ravens to paint the picture that God is still in control. After God has called Noah to start over again, the Bible says that there are two of every kind of animal in the ark and the rain comes and the ark uh, waited for the sign of the water to recede. And so the Bible tells us that in order to test whether or not there was land around, Noah sent forth a raven and the raven came back because there was not enough land. But then uh, Moses sent forth a dove and the dove returned. But, but finally he sent forth the dove again and because the dove found somewhere to land there was the dove did not return back to the ark and it let the people know that it was time to come out of the ark God can use anything in, in the book of Jonah, God, uh, brothers and sisters, when, 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 when God wanted to quarantine a disobedient and weary prophet who tried to run from the will and the way of God, God dispatched a great fish to swallow the prophet Jonah whole. The, 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 the fish didn't chew him up. He, he swallowed him whole and then if that weren't enough the fish transported Jonah safely to where God wanted Jonah to be and then the fish spit Jonah out because God can use anything in fact bro brothers and sisters God, God is so awesome God can even use ants the, the, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 6 that, 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 that God can use something uh, as small, as minute, as, 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 as infinitesimal as ants to teach us a lesson. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, if you ever wanted to know about how to prepare, the Bible says look at the ants. That, that they don't have a, a king, they don't have a queen, they don't have a, a commander or anybody telling them what to do, but some kind of way they know how to prepare for the winter in the summer because God can use anything to bring people to him. You, you, you ain't got to believe me, Daniel chapter 6, God decides that he wanted to cause hungry lions to lose their appetite. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Because of the the frail and and faulty charges that had been trumped up against Daniel, so that when he was thrown into the lion's den, all of a sudden the lions decided that they would be vegetarians that night and they would abstain from eating any meat. And Daniel was fine in the lion's den because God can use anything even animals to get his point across. And brothers and sisters, believe it or not, God can even use donkeys. And, and, and I know that it doesn't seem uh, like a big deal. I, I know, brothers and sisters, that this may not seem earth-shattering, that this indeed is a story that you have heard uh, over and over again. But I just want to take a few moments to show you the doctrine that God includes in Mark chapter 11 uh, to teach us about uh, donkeys. God uses us, brothers and sisters, uses uh, doctrine uh, even to teach us in this parable, in this particular pericope of scripture, we learn a lot from a donkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we learn a lot from a donkey. The, the, the Bible tells us in Mark chapter number 11, Jesus is coming to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. This, as you know, is traditionally what is called the triumphal entry. Jesus has instructed his disciples to go and find a specific cult that no man has sat upon in order to make his entry into Jerusalem. Uh, understand, brothers and sisters, that this cult, the word cult in the text, 
is a word that is used to describe a male donkey less than four years of age. And, and the Bible tells us in the other gospel accounts that this colt, this young donkey and his mother were together brought to Jesus for Jesus to ride on this colt. Why was the mother brought? The mother was brought because the little colt donkey was not going anywhere without mom. So the, the, the best way to get the coat was to bring mama along and, and the other gospel accounts tell us that they bring both the mother and the coat to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, uh, this is important. This little donkey has uh, some doctrine attached to him uh, because this is uh, a cult uh, that nobody has ridden upon before. Br brothers and sisters, uh, and here it is, Jesus uh, is deciding uh, on uh, the final week of his life uh, to go into Jerusalem uh, riding on uh, the back of a lowly donkey. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. J Jesus is deciding uh, the last week of his life to go into Jerusalem uh, to claim his kingdom uh, by riding on the back of uh, a donkey. I, I know why, I know why, I know why you're looking at me in that tone of voice because uh, if it were you, you would have chose another mode of transportation. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me let me see if I can let me see if I can break it all the way down like a fraction. Uh 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 uh, uh a donkey, a colt was like the Yugo. of the day. Uh, that that if you were a person, let me translate. Let me translate, cause I'm yeah yeah. Let me translate. Let me translate. Uh, 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 a Yugo uh, back in the day was 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 a very small uh, car that was real cheap. See, I got I got a, It's called reverse mentoring. I I got I got to work with Minister Isom. Y'all pray for him. Uh, uh, <laughs> He, he ain't the only one that didn't know you go. Amen. Some of y'all sitting there looking like, yeah. It, 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 it was not something that you would ride if you were trying to impress other people. Uh, it, 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 it wasn't something that you would ride if, if you wanted to show off how much status you had. It, it wasn't something that you would ride if, if you wanted to be a baller and a shot caller. And some of you who are sitting in the sanctuary today are saying to yourself, I would have never <laughs> ridden on a, a donkey. Uh, Jesus, if you're going to go in, to, to Jerusalem, shouldn't you have ridden in in a limo? <laughs> I mean, Jesus, if, you, if you're going to go in into Jerusalem, sh shouldn't you have ridden in in a Cadillac? I mean, if you're going in, Jesus, shouldn't you ha have done it in a Mercedes? Should, should, shouldn't you have done it in a Lexus if, if you're going to go in? Uh, shouldn't you have ridden in uh, on the finest so that everybody would know who you are and everybody would be able to ascertain uh, all that you have and all of your worth? But brothers and sisters, in this moment, the message that Jesus is giving uh, is not about status. It's about service. And Jesus doesn't mind being lowly. Jesus does not mind people looking at him in a certain kind of way because he understands that it's not about status, it's about service. Let me put my kickstand up long enough to remind us that even today, some 2,000 years later, can I help you? It's still not about status, it's all about service. Who are who are you serving? And how are you serving them? J Jesus comes 
brothers and sisters, not because he is intent about making an impression on other people. Je Jesus comes, brothers and sisters, uh, because he is coming to serve. And the Bible teaches us that he rides uh, this donkey because uh, he wants to fulfill uh, the word of prophecy from Zechariah chapter number 9. Je Jesus rides in uh, on a donkey to fulfill the words of scripture. Yes, uh, he is the king of kings. Uh, but he doesn't mind riding on a donkey. Yes, he is the Lord of Lords, but he doesn't mind riding on a donkey. Yes, he is the Alpha and the Omega, but he doesn't mind riding on a donkey. Yes, he is the creator of the ends of the earth who neither faints nor is weary, but he doesn't mind riding on a donkey because he understands that it's not about status. And I wonder how many of us have gotten the message that we should serve God with humility. Jesus deliberately and intentionally chooses this donkey and there are lessons that we can learn from this donkey there is doctrine in this donkey and so for the balance of our time brothers and sisters I'm just going to lift up a few things that we can learn from this donkey so that we can understand the message of what Jesus is trying to portray here in Mark's gospel as he rides into Jerusalem on the last week of his life first of all understand brothers and sisters uh, what this donkey means in, in the culture of the day when you rode a horse as a king it meant that you were coming for war <laughs> if, if, if you rode into a city uh, uh, in, in Bible antiquity if you were a king and you rode into a city on the back of a stallion or a horse it meant that you came for war but Jesus riding on a donkey sends a completely different message because brothers and sisters uh, what, 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 what would happen is if you rode in on a horse it meant you were ready to fight but if you rode in on a donkey it meant you came in peace here it is the prince of peace coming in peace he, he, he rides into Jerusalem on the back of this donkey, brothers and sisters, to let everybody know that the kingdom that he is declaring is not one of war, but it is one of peace. And, and brothers and sisters, I get excited right there and I get happy right there because if you begin to look throughout even what's going on on a global stage, you can testify to the fact that we got enough war I can't hear too good I, I said uh, if you look on a global stage you can look around and see uh, that we have uh, enough war we have uh, Russia and Ukraine uh, in the midst of a conflict we got Israel and Hamas uh, in the midst of a conflict we, we got black and white in the midst uh, of conflict we got red and brown uh, in the midst of conflict we got neighbors uh, in the midst of conflict we got politicians uh, in the midst of conflict the truth is uh, we got enough war when you look on a global scale but somebody here ought to be willing to testify to the fact that the God you serve uh, is one that does not bring war but he's one that brings peace and, and, and somebody here can testify to the fact that you thank God uh, for the peace that Jesus uh, has decided to bring. It's his peace that allows you uh, to sleep last night. It's his peace that allows you uh, to keep your mind together. It's his peace that allows you uh, to remain sane uh, in the midst of a topsy-turvy crazy world. Can anybody testify to the fact that God has given you peace uh, even in the midst of your 
your storm that when you show up on Sunday morning it's not because everything in life is going well it's not because all things in your life are lining up the way that you want them to it's not because you got that good news it's not because you got a whole lot of money in the bank but you show up Sunday after Sunday because God has given you the peace that surpasses all understanding and it's been God in your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus is there anybody here who can thank God for peace can, can you see him riding on this donkey can, can you see him riding on this back of this donkey reminding people that I've come to bring peace. Not war. In fact, Matthew says it this way. Come, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Lord have mercy. And, and, and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and, and you'll find a rest for your soul. Is there anybody who can testify that when you gave your heart to Jesus, you found rest for your soul? You found peace in your soul. You found serenity in your soul. And you can thank God for that peace. Je Jesus, Jesus comes riding on a donkey. But, but... But brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, lest I hold you too long on my birthday, I got some cake to eat. <laughs> uh, understand that Jesus rides on this donkey, and this donkey, this colt, is also a beast of burden. This is an animal that in Bible antiquity, people would have used as a beast of burden. There, there were no U-Haul trucks. There, there, there were no, no, no moving vehicles. And so if you wanted to get a lot of stuff moved from one place to another and you couldn't afford a horse or a cart. Amen. You would load it on the back of a donkey. This donkey was a beast of burden. This donkey carried perhaps 20 or 30% of its own body weight as additional weight. In other words, this donkey could carry a heavy load. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, this, this donkey could carry a heavy load. Here, Jesus, riding into Jerusalem on this beast of burden. But I need you to see, brothers and sisters, that the donkey in the text ain't the only one that's carrying a heavy load. Jesus riding into Jerusalem on the back of this donkey preparing himself to carry the weight of the world and all of the sin of humanity to Calvary's cross in, in riding this donkey. Jesus is not trying to get a few minutes of rest and relaxation. But no, Jesus is riding this donkey, brothers and sisters, symbolizing that he is going to carry the burdens of the world to Calvary's cross.
And, and brothers and sisters, here is where I get excited. He, here is where I give God praise. Here is where I shout hallelujah. What, what it means, brothers and sisters, is this. It means that if I am able to get a beast of burden to carry something for me, it means that I don't have to carry it for myself. Let, let, let me back it up, rewind it, and say it again. If, if, if I can get a beast of burden to carry something for me, it means that I don't have to carry it for myself. Can, can you see what Jesus is doing in the text? Bro, brothers and sisters, Jesus is riding on the back of this beast of burden. And, and Jesus is riding on the back of the beast of burden to symbolize that there are some things that can be carried that you don't have to carry for yourself. I, I thought I'd have more people testifying here, but let me see if I can call the roll so it will make sense for you that Jesus carried your sin so you don't have to. Jesus carried your worry so you don't have to. Jesus carried your anxiety so you don't have to. Jesus carried your guilt so you don't have to. Jesus carried your problems so you don't have to. Jesus carried your issues so you don't have to. Jesus carried your sickness so you don't have to. Jesus carried your problems so you don't have to. Jesus carried your proclivities so you don't have to. Is there anybody here who can thank God that Jesus got rid of of my heavy load. Somebody said he's a burden bearer. Somebody said he's a heavy load sharer. Somebody said he's freeing to the friendless and he's mother to the motherless. Somebody said he's a battle axe in the time of a battle and a shelter in the time of a storm. Is there anybody here who can testify to the fact that you give God praise because he carried what you could not? And that's a part of our problem. We carry in too much. We take on our problems and mama's problems, daddy's problems, now co-workers problems, now neighbors problems, our, our friends problems. We, we're carrying way too much and because we're carrying so much it's weighing us down but Jesus came to remind us that you can cast all of your cares Lord have mercy you, you, you can cast all of your cares upon him because he's able to carry it is there anybody who can testify to the fact that you have a God who was able to carry you through? Is there anybody here who can testify to the words of the hill? If you ask the Savior to help you, to comfort, strengthen, and keep you, that he is willing to aid you. And the songwriter said he will. The songwriter said he will, he'll carry you through. Is there anybody in the building today who can testify to the fact that I've been in a situation where I couldn't carry it? The load was too big, the burdens were too heavy, the problems were too many, but I turned it over to the Lord and he worked it out. He carried me through. How did you make it? 
this far uh, because he carried me through uh, how did you keep your right mind uh, because he carried me through uh, how did you make it through cancer uh, because he carried me through uh, how did you make it through unemployment uh, because he carried me through uh, is there anybody here uh, who can testify to the fact uh, that God will carry me through I'm I, I, I'm done I'm done that, 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 that's enough for a birthday sermon I'm done I'm done Jesus riding on the back of this donkey is teaching us lessons about peace he's teaching us lessons about burdens. But lastly, brothers and sisters, he teaches us another lesson that I got to give you, and then I promise you I'll be out of, out of your way. Je Jesus riding on the back of this donkey symbolized the blessing that he was about to bring to the people. It symbolized him taking away the burden. It symbolized him coming in peace. <laughs> but, but, but it also symbolized the blessing that he was bringing to the people. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Uh, in Bible antiquity, if you were going to abundantly bless somebody, you would put that blessing on the back of a donkey. Amen. Amen. Now, if it was a small blessing, you wouldn't need a big donkey. But if it was a big blessing, you, you, you would pack that blessing on the back of a donkey. They, 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 they literally had saddles that had pockets on the side. And if you wanted to really bless somebody, you would stuff the pockets full of blessings. You, you, you ain't got to believe me. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 33, it records, watch this, Jacob had made Esau mad. Stay with me. And, 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 and because he had done Esau wrong. And J Jacob decided, watch this, Jacob decided that in order to try, watch this, to appease the wrath of Esau. He would send Esau a donkey loaded down with treasure. He, 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 he wanted to appease Esau's wrath. So he packed a donkey full of treasure and sent it to Esau's camp. Okay, okay. Why, why did he do it? He, he did it to appease wrath. Okay, all right. Stay with me. Uh, 1 Samuel 25, the Bible says that, that, that Jacob ain't the only one who, who learned how to pack a donkey full of gifts. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 25, Abigail loaded down a donkey full of food and gifts to send to David to appease David's wrath based off how Abigail's husband spoke to the soon-to-be king. Here it is. This donkey in Genesis 33 is packed 
with the blessing with the intent to appease wrath. 1 Samuel 25, we get another picture of a donkey packed with a blessing intended to appease wrath. Well, in Mark 11, we get one more picture of a donkey that's packed with a blessing to appease wrath. But instead, I'm done. I'm taking the exit ramp right here. It, instead of the donkey being packed down with gold and treasure, instead of the donkey being packed down with trinkets and gifts, instead of the donkey being packed down with all kind of food and assorted morsels. This donkey in Mark chapter 11 is packed with the perfect gift. In fact, this donkey in Mark chapter 11 is packed down with the best gift that you can ever receive. Is there anybody in the building today on a Palm Sunday morning who can testify that I received this gift called Jesus and this gift not only filled my belly this gift not only tickled my fancy this gift not only made me happy but the gift of Jesus saved my soul is there anybody here who can testify to the fact that I thank God that Jesus came riding on a donkey. I thank God that Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on the back of a beast of burden. I thank God that Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on the back of a donkey that symbolized peace. But I thank God that Jesus came riding into Jerusalem as a gift that would appease the wrath of God. And I thank God that because he died I didn't have to I thank God that because he was crucified I wasn't have to I thank God that the gift of Jesus appeased the wrath of God and I believe that I end the sermon by saying something like this because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know who holds the future and, and life is worth the living just because he lives so I believe I bid you adieu and tell you I see you later when I tell you this right on King Jesus, uh, no man uh, cannot hinder me. Uh, right on, uh, King Jesus, uh, no man uh, cannot hinder me. Uh, right on, uh, King Jesus, uh, I see you riding uh, through my trouble. Uh, I see you riding uh, through my pain. Uh, I see you riding uh, through my turmoil. Uh, I see you riding. Uh, through my chaos, I see you riding uh, through my problems, uh, I see you riding uh, through my issues, uh, I see you riding uh, through my problems, uh, through my pain, uh, and through my sickness, uh, so when I see you ride, uh, I'll just say, uh, ride on, 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 uh, ride on. Uh, no man uh, cannot hinder me. Uh, 
is there anybody here who can give God praise if you see him right? Stand, stand with me. Stand with me. That's enough. Stand. Stand with me. He has a track record in Scripture. When you wanted to appease wrath, you would load a donkey down with a good gift. And you would Send that donkey in the direction. Watch this. I ain't got time to preach this. You, you, would, you would send that donkey in the direction of the person who you were trying to appease. Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem where the temple was and the Holy of Holies belonged which represented the very presence of God. Jesus is riding this donkey because God wants to show us that even in simple things, God can teach us a lesson. Never become so sophisticated that you don't let simple things Bless you. Our altar workers are coming as we extend to you a gospel invitation. question is, do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in Does your heart? Does he live in your heart? Do you know Jesus? Oh, do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? The sacrifice of Jesus on Palm Sunday. The imagery of Jesus riding in on Palm Sunday is in preparation of the sacrifice that he would make on Good Friday. You can't understand the doctrine of the donkey on Sunday if you don't accept the gift that was sacrificed on Friday. So the question we have for you is a simple one. It's do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? Do you know Jesus? Oh, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? It's such a good question. Will you turn to a neighbor and ask him, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? Wait for an answer. Wait for an answer. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? Look back at that neighbor and tell that neighbor, say, neighbor, if that's you who needs to go to the altar for any reason at all, if you are afraid to walk by yourself, you can ask me. I'll walk with you. If that's you, God's placed somebody right beside you. Do you know Jesus? Do you know does he live in your Does heart? Does he live in your heart? Do you know Jesus? Oh, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? How do we get to know him, ladies? How do we get to know him? Confess him with your mouth. Believe him. Believe him in your heart. Do you know him? Do you know Jesus? You can know him. You can know Jesus in your heart.
Confess him with your mouth. Confess him with your mouth. Believe him in your heart. Believe him in your heart. Do you know him? Do you know Jesus? You can know Jesus. You can know Jesus in your heart. Confess him with your mouth. Confess him with your mouth. Believe him. Believe him in your heart. Do you know him? Do you know Jesus? You can know Jesus. You can know Jesus in your heart. How do we get to know him? Confess him with your mouth. Confess him with your mouth. Believe him Believe in your heart. Believe him in your heart. Do you know him? Do you know Jesus? You can know Jesus. You can know Jesus in your heart. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your Does heart? He live Is there one today? Please make a decision to come to the Lord. Do you know Jesus? On this Palm Sunday, is there one today? Does he live in your heart? Who needs to accept the gift of Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? Right where you are, heads bowed, eyes closed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us simple lessons, even through this donkey in Mark 11. We give you praise for the lessons, the examples, the imagery, the symbolism that God, you allowed your son Jesus so many years ago to ride into Jerusalem on the back of a beast of burden, bringing peace as the ultimate gift that would appease the wrath of the Father. God, we thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know how you do what you do, but some kind of way, take these words and make them a seed. Plant them in the hearts and minds of your people that in due season, they might take root and grow. We give you praise for it. We give you glory for it. We give you honor for it. In Jesus' name. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Oh, do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? Perhaps you're watching online and you feel in your heart the Lord moving on your heart for you to make a decision to come to him. There's some ways on your screen right now that will let us know about the decisions you've made. If you are watching on our website, there's a point of decision form that you can fill out, or if you're watching via one of our social media platforms, you can direct message us, and we'll get back to you with next steps, or if you just want that human interaction, you can call the number on the screen, 919-772-8078, extension 100. Our prayer warriors are standing by to encourage and strengthen you and to give you next steps. Springfield, will you help me praise God for those who we believe by faith? are coming to the Lord, making decisions to come to him, amen. It's prayer time here at Springfield. It's prayer time here at Springfield. It's prayer time here at Springfield. If you have a prayer request that you would like to register by coming forward, the altar is open and it's time for prayer. While you're coming, let's remember the following in prayer. Let's remember. Brother Thomas Williams, and let's remember Reverend Donald King and his family. Let's continue to pray for Kelvin Rayner and his family, for Brother Don Bynum and his family, for the Fuller family, for Brother Tayshawn Moore and his family. They certainly need our prayers as they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We want to continue in prayer for uh, Deacon Herbert and Sister Ella Robertson, for Brother George Hurdle, for Bernice Smith, for Lottie Smith, for Shelby Smith, for Yvonne Lee, for Barbara Dunn, for Eloise Snow. We want to remember in prayer, continue to be in prayer for Cheryl Walker, for Ada Horton, for Oscar Sanders, for Ernestine Lee, 
for Sherry Phillips, for Larice Knight, for Doris Knight, Gabe Sanders, Sandra Garris, Natalie Williams, Chris May, Belinda Robertson, Sharon Keys. We want to be in prayer for Dak Kelly and family, for Anita Deaver, Wendell Deaver, Shamar Leathers, Nakima Mack, Paul Potts. We want to continue in prayer for Sister Doris Hawkins. She needs our prayers. We want to continue in prayer for all of those who are dealing with sickness and diagnoses. We want to continue in prayer for the situation in St. All. They need our prayers. We want to continue in prayer for the Twitty family. We want to continue in prayer for the Simmons family. We want to continue in prayer for uh, Tracy Farmer, for Vicki Gibson, for Sandra Mays, for Amber Ellis, Barbara Sexton, Barbara Williams, Linda Lenek, Brenda Sexton, Teresa Pamphlet, Hattie McNeil, Rodney McNeil, Bobby Merritt, Demaris Simmons, Chris Dobson, Rebe Rebecca Miller, Curtis Gular, Sandra Garris, Cheryl Burns, Brianna Leach, Charlize Basket, Lou Renter, Annabelle Peters, Benita Jade, Ontario, Erica Austin, Elizabeth Gilotti, and so many others. If you have a person, a place, or a thing on your heart, would you just whisper it to the Lord right now, whatever it is? You got a person, a place, or a thing on your heart, would you just whisper it to the Lord right now, whatever it is? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody said, preacher, nobody heard what I whispered. Nobody knows what my request is. I want you to know that God heard your request. And even if your name didn't make this list, your name is on his list. Pray with him for Deacon Derek Leach as he comes now to lead us to the throne of grace. We also want to remember Sister Gloria Young. Let us pray. Eternal Father, our God, it's again, Lord, that we stand before you to say thank you. God, we thank you for all that you are and all that you do. God, we can do nothing without you. God, but we know that all thi all thing we can do all things with you. God, we confess, God, that we've done and said and acted in ways, God, that were not pleasing in your sight, God. So we ask that you will forgive us for those things, God. God, that you would just restore our relationship with you. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this place called Springfield, God. God, we thank you for allowing us to rise this morning to see yet another day. God, it could have been different, God, but you allowed us one more time in this place. So, God, we're so grateful. God, we uh, thank you for the word that came forth this morning, God. God, we pray and ask that we all will apply it to our lives, God, that we will become better Christians. God, we love you on today, God, and we honor you in all that we say and do. God, it's someone standing around the altar this morning. For whatever reason, God, you know all about it. God, you knew before they came and, and said something about it, whispered it. But God, we ask that whatever it is, God, that you would just uh, help them in any in, in, in every way. God, we ask that you would just put your arms around them. God, that you would strengthen them, whether we can build them up, whether they're torn down. God, you heard all those names that were called by the pastor, God. We ask that you just watch over those members as well. God, we all need you, God. God, and we just want to be willing vessels to do your will. God, continue to bless our pastor on this special day. God, continue to meet his needs and the needs of all your uh, children. God, we thank you for what you're going to do in our lives, and we just give you the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hug somebody next to you. Tell them I got a feeling everything. Yes, I got a feeling everything. Okay. Amen. Amen. Listen, do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in there we go. your heart? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live in your heart? The 
Let me do you know Jesus? Let me show you what the Lord will do. It's never too late to come to him. Amen. I said, let me show you what the Lord will do. It's never too late to come to him. Will you help me welcome the Robinson family who wants to come and be a part of the Springfield Baptist Church? I said, will you help me welcome the Robinson family who wants to come to be a part of the Springfield Baptist Church? All right, Reverend Marshall is going to take you in the back to get some information from you. Let me shake your hand on the way out. Springfield, let's give God praise. few things that are happening this week. Don't forget uh, a Bible study uh, on Wednesday. Um, Bible study on Tuesday and Wednesday. Our council prayer meeting on Wednesday is canceled. Please support the REMA. Um, please support the REMA Holy Week services uh, if you are able on Friday. On Friday at 7 p.m. Amen. On Friday at 7 p.m. We'll have our own uh, Seven Last Sands from the Cross remix. Seven Last Sands remix, amen. And that's going to be virtual only. It's going to be virtual only. Don't come to the church. There won't be nobody here. Don't come to the church. It's going to be virtual only. You'll be able to see it on our, our platforms at 7 p.m. Then on Saturday, on Saturday, much is happening. I think it's 10 a.m. for the kids. 10 a.m. for the children across the street. Uh, they're having their resurrection party uh, in uh, the community center, ages 2 to 12. That's going to be across the street. Amen. And then uh, uh, on Saturday afternoon at 4, amen, our drama ministry is going to do their resurrection presentation. We give God praise for them. Amen. Let's be much in prayer. Let's be much in prayer for them. Amen. Uh, uh, let's be much in prayer for them as they work towards uh, the completion of this. We want to be here to support them. Uh, doors open at 3.30. Am I right? 3.30. 3.30. And the production begins at 4 o'clock. And then on Sunday, we're having joint Sunday school. Amen. And we're going to feed you breakfast. Amen. Amen. And that's at 7. 7 a.m. Amen. And so we look very much forward to that. All right. Now, if you come late, I can't hear too good. If, if, if you come late, now don't be, don't have your mouth poked out if you don't get nothing to eat. If you come late, amen. It's, uh, it's the, the early bird that catches the worm. And uh, amen. And he rolls early. I, 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 don't the preacher stand up here and say early Sunday morning? Okay, so be here early Sunday morning. How about that? Lord, have mercy. I'll pray for you, Pastor. All right. If all hearts and minds are clear, let's stand to be dismissed. Again, we thank and praise God um, for the musicians who filled in today. Let's give God praise for them. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful job. We praise and thank God for you. Amen. Let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week. God bless you. Have a